This news update is brought to you by... Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Yes, your sun power. This is the noon Barbados Day update for Monday, April 14, 2014. I'm Kmar Jordan. It's day number five of strike action in the sugar sector and losses are mounting. The Barbados Agricultural Management Company estimates the industry is losing $144,000 a day and that puts costs so far at about a quarter million Barbados dollars. But the General Secretary of the Barbados Workers' Union, Sir Roy Trotman, insists money cannot be the issue when much more is at stake. I would respond to say that some social scientists said that Hitler had the public good at heart when he fed those large numbers of people to the, Jew, the Jews into the ovens and killed them in the mass murders. How much must one take before one argues that the life or the livelihood of people does not have a price tag. So you measuring a hundred thousand dollars, how do you measure somebody who went to work a morning and was told this day is your last, when in fact discussions were being held with a view to having an approach that was different. When are we in Barbados going to wake up that money is not the be all and end all of existence? Later this afternoon, Labour Minister Dr. Esther Barsuku will meet with the BWU and the BAMC to avert a possible escalation of the strike. And now for this item, just coming to hand, two teenagers who were charged with setting a bushfire in Chancery Lane Christchurch have been released on bail. 17-year-old Jed Anthony Taylor of Fall Bay St. Philip and 16-year-old Tyler Robert Coombs of Worthings Road Christchurch were granted $25,000 in bail when they appeared in the Oysins Magistrates Court. They have been ordered to surrender their passports and have also been placed on a 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew. They will return to court on July 10th. Police are still searching for leads at this hour following a burglary at Acre Beach Hotel. Last Friday night, a masked armed man entered the Christchurch Hotel and stole an undisclosed sum of money from staff on duty. No one was injured during the robbery, which occurred around 9 p.m. Investigations are continuing. Distasteful, that's how opposition MP Cynthia Ford is describing the 2013 of the General's report that found evidence of financial impropriety, including millions of dollars in overdue payments to taxpayers, pensioners and suppliers. Ford tells Barbados today the Auditor General clearly has his work cut out for him. The operators of public service vehicles say challenges in the sector demand that government create a more level playing field. With the removal of the fuel subsidy, the interim chairman of the Association of Private Transport Operators, Morris Lee, says owners and workers will no doubt feel the pinch since their expenditure will rise. He tells Barbados today this is compounded by the fact that bus fares are set by the government and will, this will, while this will benefit the transport board, private operators will come up short. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Yes, your sun power.
to regional news now. Journalists in Jamaica are among the latest to receive death threats following weekend reports on convicted murder of Vibes Cartel. The Jamaica Observer newspaper says its crime court desk reporter Carl Walker has been receiving several threatening calls on his mobile phone. At the same time, Nationwide News Network says its producer has also received death threats after the radio station aired the voice notes that were used by the prosecution in the conviction of the artiste and three co-accused. Following the murder trial, Sergeant Patrick Linton, the former cyber crime boss who gave technical evidence in the matter, had received threats and there was an attempt to firebomb his house. The Director of Public Prosecutions, Paula Llewellyn, and her team who handled the case also received death threats. Tragedy on the international scene this morning. 71 people were killed in a blast at a busy bus station in Nigeria's capital. 16 luxury coaches and 24 minibuses were destroyed. And journalists reported that rescue workers and police were gathering body parts as ambulances rushed the wounded to hospital. But details are still emerging about what caused the blast or who is responsible. The Nigerian president, Goodluck Jonathan, visited the scene. And whilst he did not name anyone, he pointed fingers at the Islamist militant group Boko Haram, which has waged a campaign of violence, mainly in northeastern Nigeria. Well, that's been our noon update. Join us again at 6 o'clock this evening. Until then, log on to www.barbadostoday.bb. Subscribe to our e-paper and like us on Facebook to get more news and sports. I'm Kmar Jordan. Enjoy your afternoon and join us again at 6 o'clock. This news update is brought to you by... Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bike. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Yes,